ceremony and an apparatus dedication. Also, I'd like to thank everybody involved in making this apparatus purchase happen that we're dedicating today. This is truck number two right here. We're dedicating to the fine uh, men that passed away on 9-11, the 343 men that passed away. I'd like to thank Mayor Deister, City Administrator Donna Owen, City Controller Maria Brown, Dean Spring, the Head of Purchasing, Italian Chief Lou Michaels, our Chief Mechanic of the Niagara Falls Fire Department, and anybody else I forgot to mention. They all helped and arranged the use of casino funds to purchase the three rigs that we presently have dedicated to people on this job. Um, when it was first discussed to, to dedicate our newest ladder truck, it was a no-brainer to dedicate it to the 343 firefighters that answered their last call on the September 11, 2001. It was a day that will never be forgotten by anybody who witnessed the events of that day. Um, the memory of those 343 firefighters that passed away that day will live on forever. Now I'd like to present the mayor in Iron Falls um, to talk a little about the uh, events of today. Thanks very much, Chief, and I want to thank everyone for joining us here today. I want to give a special thanks to U.S. Attorney William Holtbull for joining us here today. Thank you very much, Bill, for coming to uh, join us. Uh, as I stand here today as mayor, I feel a deepening sense of responsibility uh, to uh, the young men and women of our Niagara Falls uh, Fire Department. It's only natural because, you know, our department is getting younger. But senior people in the Niagara Falls Fire Department are people that I grew up with, you know, people that are uh, my peers, and uh, they were experts at their trade long before uh, I got there as mayor of the city of Niagara Falls. But if you look at the people lined up in uniform here today for the Niagara Falls Fire Department, you'll see that over the course of the last few years, we brought in a new generation of Niagara Falls firefighters, and it's been my great honor uh, to have uh, been there and had the opportunity to swear them uh, in. And uh, you know, there's a kind of standard speech that I give during the swearing-in ceremony. Most of you have probably heard this so many times by now uh, that you're tired of hearing it. But I want uh, to talk a little bit about the spirit of that. Uh, speech here today because I think it's important on this occasion. Uh, when I speak as well, I speak not just to those who are taking the oath, but to their families as well. And I explain to them but that by taking the oath, they now have entered into a new family, the family of the public safety services of the city of Niagara Falls. And on that occasion, I make promises to them. I promise them that I will ensure that they have the absolutely best leaders 
that they could possibly have. And I think I've done that. I've got great chiefs and great senior officers in both the police and fire uh, that do the best job not only to create public safety for our citizens, but to ensure that every single one of our firefighters and police officers returns home safely at the end of their uh, shift. I promise those families that we will give the absolute best training uh, to uh, their sons and daughters uh, so that they're pre prepared for whatever situations might come their way. Knowing that there's some situations I suppose that you can never be uh, prepared for. That's one of the lessons of 9-11. Uh, uh, and finally, I promise them that we will provide the absolute best equipment that we possibly can in order to give them the best possible job, not just of protecting us, but of protecting themselves uh, as they go about their a very dangerous business uh, every day. The one thing that I can't promise them or promise their families is the thing that I would most like to be able uh, to promise, and that is that they will return home safely at the end of every shift. That I simply can't promise, because I'd be lying. Uh, it's in the nature of the fire service that it is dangerous a business, and I cannot help but think every time that I administer the oath to a new firefighter that I might be assisting them in entering into a compact with the citizens of the city of Niagara Falls, the result of which might be that they might be asked to sacrifice their life for the uh, lives of their fellow citizens. But that's part of the bargain, right? In exchange, we owe them our uh, utmost support. And that extends not just to providing good leadership, to providing good training, and to providing the very best equipment that we can uh, provide. It also means that we need to make certain that they are fairly compensated during the time that they're working for us, that they have proper health care, including coverage in the event that they should become injured or disabled uh, on the job, which of course is a constant threat, and that when they've served out their years with the Niagara Falls Fire Department, that we look after them in their retirement. And I renew my pledge uh, today to make certain that we take care of both three very important things as well as the first three. I think we've got a special responsibility. You know, we've got responsibilities to everyone who works hard for the city of Niagara Falls and all our city employees work hard. But there's something different about the public safety services because I understand when I administer that oath that each of these young men and women that puts on the uniform for the city of Niagara Falls, they could lose their life the very first day on the job. It's possible. It can happen. Right? And so we, from the very first day of their service, have a very, very special responsibility uh, to them. And uh, at this point, uh, you know, I feel uh, as though my responsibility to lead here means that I have to try to defend my public safety services under some very difficult circumstances that we now face. Everyone knows that the city of Niagara Falls is undergoing some major, major financial hardship as a result of the failure of the Seneca Nation of Indians to deliver revenues to the state of New York, which means the state of New York has no revenues to deliver uh, to us. We're somewhere, I suppose, around $60 million now that we're uh, owed. And if you're wondering how we spend casino revenues when we have them to spend, look right in front of you at the new equipment that we've been able to purchase for the Niagara Falls Fire Department with those uh, revenues. Uh, how ironic it is here on the anniversary of 9-11 when we're talking about the gallant efforts of New York City firefighters to rescue people uh, from a high-rise office building in downtown Manhattan that the entity that creates perhaps the greatest firefighting challenge for the city of Niagara Falls, the high-rise uh, Seneca Hotel at the casino, is not paying their fair share of our public safety services. I know it's a difficult thing to have to discuss on the anniversary of 9-11, but it's a cold, hard reality that I have to face as mayor. And I'm rapidly reaching the point where I might have to talk 
to my fire chief about whether I would ask my firefighters to respond to a contingency in that high-rise hotel at a time when they're not keeping up their part of the social compact. How could I lay off firefighters and ask them to respond to a fire at the Senate Hotel without having taken some sort of dramatic step somewhere along the line to make sure, sure that they pay their fair share? As I say, these are difficult issues to try to discuss on the anniversary of 9-11, but I felt that it was something that absolutely needed to be said. There's a social compact that exists here. There are certain unwritten rules. Leave aside the legal agreements that underpin our society. One of the strongest of these is the relationship between society and those who protect its public safety. And I'm always going to stand very strongly for the maintenance of that relationship. If you want to be part of our community here in the city of Niagara Falls, you bought into that part. There is no alternative path. Uh, that said, uh, you know, we at one point uh, here just about a year ago uh, staged a ceremony up on the stage at the Niagara Falls uh, Blues Festival. Uh, coincidentally, the Blues Festival last year fell on the 10th anniversary of 9 11. And so I kept telling the promoters, you know, you've got to be prepared. We're going to go up on stage. You've got the whole community together on the anniversary of 9 11. We have to be certain that we. Uh, mark that uh, uh, anniversary appropriately. And so on that occasion, I was very, very honored uh, to be joined on stage uh, by one of two Niagara Falls firefighters who were first responders on 9-11, the other having passed away, or you, know, you would have been there as, as well. And of course, that's uh, uh, John Ashklar, uh, who I'm proud to have working for the city of Niagara Falls, who I also would be proud to uh, you know, hopefully call uh, my friend. And uh, at that time, uh, we announced our intention uh, to dedicate a new piece of apparatus purchased with casino revenues to those 343 gallon firefighters who lost their lives on 9-11. And uh, at that time, in my enthusiasm, uh, I, was, I had suggested uh, that it would be appropriate for us uh, to put John's name on the side of the, of the truck. Uh, I was subsequently informed that uh, Usually that we don't do that for people who are still alive because it's considered very bad luck, right? Uh, and so, uh, you know, we've uh, made an adjustment in terms of the inscription here. Uh, several of the guys who work uh, for John said that they'd be happy to kill him if it would help us get over that little bit. So I'll give you their names later, John. It was all in jest, of course. Uh, but uh, I can't uh, go to one of these ceremonies uh, without uh, thinking about... Uh, uh, John Ashklar and Dave Williams and the experience that they had on 9-11. I think it gives our community and our department a special connection to the events of that day to have had people that were there as first responders. I've said this before, uh, you know, the only reason I think they survived that day is they couldn't get there fast enough to get killed in the initial response. I think that's basically true. You know, if they'd had a faster ride, uh, you know, uh, they would have been uh, 344th and 345th firefighter victims. So a special connection, I think, from our department to the events of 9-11. I pledge to you that as long as I am mayor of the city of Niagara Falls, we will never forget the events of that day. That as long as I am the mayor of the city of Niagara Falls, uh, we are going to leave no stone unturned in our efforts to make sure that you have the best leaders, the best training, the best equipment, and that we do absolutely everything we can do to ensure that every single one of you comes home safely from work to your loved ones every single day. God bless you, and thank you for being here today. Thank you, Mayor. I um, appreciate the speech and all the support. I just wanted to read what the dedication on uh, truck number two says. It says, dedicated to 343 firefighters who answered the last alarm on September 11, 2001. Now, there's a second part to this ceremony. Uh, we have a, a patio that we're having put in right now. It's a memorial patio. Uh, the place to put in the patio fire department. Right here on the side here on Memorial Avenue uh, in High Park. 
Um, the same city officials were instrumental in the app that were instrumental in the apparatus purchase also helped in the project. I also like to mention some other important city officials, including Director of Public Works Dave Kenny, who helped out, Deputy Director of Public Works John Caso, Robert McCona Trains, Battalion Chief Dan Bowen, whose idea it was to do this, and he's been involved in the start and in, in planning the project. Battalion Chief Greg Colangelo helped getting the markings on the bricks. Firefighter Brian Petrosi helped prep the groundwork, the grounds work. Um, and currently, city bricklayer Adam Cedro, who is currently working on the area, and it should be done in a few weeks. I'd like to have the first brick placed today um, by, you mentioned as the mayor, by John Asklar, who was present on 9 11, helping for the survivors. John? New York City, 9 11, 2001. What will be done uh, for our memorial service on Sunday, October 7th? Hopefully, we will all attend the service and see the Sunday as well. First of all, uh, your first and last name is spelled both John, J O H N, S R A S K L A R. And these guys will probably ask the questions. Okay, I'm just sure. Stay out of the way. What does day mean to you? It must mean something. Well, it does. It's, it's a nice remembrance uh, of that horrible day 11 years ago, and it's nice that we have this memorial going up to remember all those who uh, made the ultimate sacrifice that day, and it's, you know, it's, it's nice, to, nice to remember those. What about the truck? Uh, uh, that's, that's also very nice. It's uh, it's one of our city's way of uh, remembering those 343 who died September 11th, and it's, it's our, our way of uh, you know, honoring them and remembering them. John, you were there that day. When, can you tell us some of your memories? Uh, well, uh, it's, uh, it was just chaos. It was a mess, and uh, you know, uh, I still can't believe that I was there on that day. And uh, we were real. Uh, it was a real honor to help out, uh, help out on that day in our country's time of need. Honestly, it's, it, it's still so. It still must resonate with you after eleven. Oh, oh, sure. You, you can't, you can't escape it. You can't get away from it. It's, uh, you know, it's something that's always be with you, and, and that's why this is a real nice uh, memorial to, uh, to keep the memory of, of that going. Well, well, you know, with time, with time, it, it's, it's less fresh uh, with time. But uh, you know, this is the type of thing that uh, we cannot, uh, you know, ever forget, and hopefully, we'll learn from and prepare for in the future. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Megan. I think that all of us in New York State feel a special connection to the events of 9-11, but having had two members of our own fire department actually there responding that day uh, gives us a special connection. Uh, one of them, Dave Williams, has since uh, passed away, and uh, we dedicated a piece of fire equipment uh, uh, to him earlier uh, in my administration. And as I was kind of joking uh, here today, uh, the truck uh, two, a uh, ladder truck uh, that we're dedicating to uh, the 343 first responders who died on 9-11 is really a dedication in many ways to John Ashlar, the surviving uh, member of our force that was there that day. Uh, it's considered, I understand, very bad luck to put the name of a living firefighter on the side of a piece of uh, apparatus, but uh, we're certainly there in spirit. Mayor, you uh, really made it a point to talk about the situation with the Senecas. Can you explain that? I mean, we're standing here in front of our newest pieces of firefighting equipment. There are two ladder trucks. These are the types of trucks that you use to respond to fires and high rises. Appropriately, these were paid for with casino revenues. Uh, but it, I was just trying to, you know, and again, this is a very emotional thing uh, for me here. We're facing an extraordinarily difficult budget situation going forward as a result of the failure of the Senecas to deliver the revenues to New York State. And I just wanted to make it clear that if 
you know, we reach a situation where we're talking about layoffs of firefighters, I think long before that happens, there's going to be a call from me to the gaming corporation informing them that they can no longer count on a fire response at their high-rise hotel. If they're not paying the bills, I don't know how I could ask people to risk their lives for them. There's a basic compact between the community and our first responders, and, and I think they have to be part of that. They have to step up and uh, be responsible citizens of this community, and right now they're creating a big crisis for everyone. Are we at the point where we might need to lay off firefighters? We're in the process of putting together a 2013 budget, and it's very, very difficult. We're asking right now basically for the, the disaster budget from every single department. But what I mean by that is that what we would do if we had no ability to access casino revenues in 2013. Again, we've used casino revenues responsibly. We've tried to use them mostly for pay-as-you-go projects. But the relatively small portion of those things that have been used to cover recurring costs, basically to pay for a public safety building, which is to us an unfunded state mandate, that well, roughly $5 million a year is adding up and it's creating not just a hole going into 2013, but a cash flow crunch in 2012. Well, I think we're certainly hoping that this is going to be resolved in 2013. The parties are engaged in a process of arbitration that we hope is going to result uh, uh, in some sort of a decision in 2013. But I think one of the things that we're very anxious uh, to do, although we've been in constant contact with the governor's office, I need the, uh, now some sort of a long-term plan for each and every contingency related to uh, what could happen with the casino revenues, uh, from uh, total vindication of the state's position in arbitration to a vindication, I suppose, of the Seneca's uh, position. We need to be prepared to deal with each and every one of those contingencies. And How much revenue are you behind? We think that somewhere between 58 and 60 million. Again, it's difficult to calculate because some of the reporting requirements uh, for the, that used to exist for the Senecas don't exist anymore. Uh, but let's say 58 million and counting, and probably up in the near the uh, 60 million mark for the, the city and it pass through entities that are funded out of the city's share. That's a pretty big chunk of change. Yeah, it's huge. In worst case scenario, you would call President Porter to let him know that. Is that the city's responsibility to? That is because it is this is the you know the the fire department that would respond to a contingency at the uh, casino and as I say I find it very very difficult to ask my firefighters to risk their lives uh, to help make millions of dollars for a gaming corporation that's not paying its bills. That's a pretty strong statement. Though. That's a very strong statement. It's really a very strong down statement. To it that if something like that happened, you would withhold services. There's like some that? pretty dramatic things that are going to happen here, one way or another. And again, I have to make the decisions on behalf of the citizens of Niagara Falls that are owed this, uh, you know, 58 plus million dollars, and on behalf of not just my firefighters but their families. Thank you, Mayor.